right, so, first of all, great game. Uh, you guys took it 2-0, and and were able to yes, take, uh, take both games rather commandingly. So, I guess we should ask a few questions here, and my main one being... Well, what was your overarching strategy in the first game? We noticed how you picked up a very push-heavy laning uh, situation. Were you really trying to go for that early game push? Or you were just trying to go for a, something that would uh, something that would deal well with the late game. Well, what we really wanted to do for the first game was we wanted to pick a really push-heavy lineup and hopefully just push them very quickly and maybe uh, just run through them in a way that their second game they were a little nervous, a little uncomfortable. Ah. And I feel like we did that pretty well. Oh um, yeah, I mean, you guys got a 13-minute racks, if I remember correctly, and you finished the game by 25. So, yeah. and I noticed, yeah, I mean, well, what did you think of when, well, I was noticing with their picks, when they picked up something like uh, like Luna and stuff like that, where they were kind of going for a, a pseudo counter push with Luna and um, uh, Nature's Prophet. What were you thinking at that point? Did you uh, think that you were, did you feel threatened at all? Or did you think... When we saw the Furion pick, um, that was something we had kind of anticipated, to be honest. Um, we thought maybe they would want to counter push us, but our strategy was to push early at that uh, 10, 11, 12 minute mark. And Furion is a hero that will split push, but he's not a dominating solo pusher that early in the game. And a Furion with a Rax down is at a huge disadvantage. Uh, I used to play offlane a lot, and. Furion from behind is not a fun hero to play. Right, right. So, they've had a Bane for your bear. Did you have right. any any real way to counter that? Or were you just trying to go for a, go for a just straight up attack him and hope he dies before he gets the enviable on your bear? Well, when dealing with Bane, something that we like to do is just have so many dudes. I mean, we had the, the Lone Druid, the bear... The lycanthrope, the two wolves. Um, so you're trying to split. You were trying to 10. split who he was trying to target, pretty much. They could enfeeble someone, but they couldn't enfeeble everyone. Right. And I mean, that's that's how we wanted to deal with Bane. Right. I mean, you had the Dragonite picked up, which is one, even in and of himself, is probably one of the heroes that you want to enfeeble as well. So. For sure. For sure. Right. Right. Were you confident with your Chen pickup as well? I noticed that fits pretty heavily into your uh, pushing lineup, but. It's not usually typically a hero that we totally see being played by most teams. Were you really confident, or did you just pick that up to try to fit with your pushing? Um, Chen is a hero I've practiced quite a bit. Uh, same with Enchantress. I don't have any problems playing those heroes. Um, I don't know if you noticed, I grabbed the Chen, and then I grabbed the Visage. I oh, right, right. Starcraft too. I used to play uh -huh. Starcraft too. So you're an APM um, guy. Yes. Um, my Visage play, I wasn't super proud of. I felt like my familiar control was pretty bad, but that's my least practice hero. Uh, the Chen I'm really comfortable with, the Ench I'm really comfortable with. Right, so with the whole idea, and I'm, I'm going to go on overarching both games here, did you feel with the stand-in that you were at too much of an advantage there, or did you feel it was a disadvantage? With the stand-in, um, Acer Veneer is a guy that we've all played with some. Um, I, we think he's a really talented player, and he's the only reason we would have picked Magnus. He's a fantastic Magnus player for the off lane in that second game. Yeah, I was Normally, noticing. I would in have the never off drafted a Magnus for off lane, but Acer is a fantastic Magnus player. Um, I feel like we would have played it differently, and I didn't. Uh, I know Well Warded has had some trouble scheduling practices lately, so I believe that. Um, I, I think we might have taken it either way with Acer or Yoika, who's our normal offlane player, and he's a fantastic player. It's just right. that it would have been a different game. It All right, so very different games. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look at your. Um, I'm gonna ask you if you remember why did you ban out Gyro as your last ban in game two? I noticed how they need. You noticed too how they needed a mid, and so you decided that that mid was going to be a gyrocopter, especially with the lamp with the uh, the um. What was it, the Naga Siren? Did you really feel right, that the, the, the Gyro would have been a threat there? Um, what we were feeling uh, was that they could have put the Darkseer mid. They could have kind of run the Naga mid. It could have even been Dazzle mid. The thing was that regardless of who they decided to put mid, if they had Gyrocopter with that Dazzle, Naga Siren um, combo, the armor reduction is actually so insane that 
the flat cannon just tears your whole team apart, and we wouldn't have gotten those same fights that we did with the Magnus and the Puck. Right, right. And so you really felt that, that was a good ban. What about the Weaver ban out? <coughs> um, the Weaver ban out, uh, to be honest, that was kind of a cocky ban for me. Um, I, I felt like the strategy wasn't so much imp important. I felt like I could pick around what heroes they were going to pick especially since I was pretty sure they were going to give up the Wisp because they did in the first game. Um, right. So, so it was just pretty much Weaver using a ban? I just didn't want to play against. Ah, I gotcha. All right, so you know, I-O-C-K. I-O-C-K, something that we really love to see in games because it, it absolutely does well. And I noticed that you land them in the trialing with the Visage. So all in all, pretty standard stuff. Did you really think that they were going to give away too much? Because they had you pretty much on the back foot in that lane. For a wide par uh, point, were you at all worried? Um, I was a little concerned about it. It's something we haven't practiced as much. Uh, our lanes, not our lanes, sorry, our roles have kind of moved around a bit. For a while I was off laning, then I was mid, then I was carry. Um, so Tenken, who's spent quite a bit of time hard carrying, has not played that much Chaos Knight with uh, Doyle Points as a Wisp, and um, certainly not my Visage. So right. Uh, a lot of that was kind of inexperience with the heroes that we were using. Um, I don't feel like we played that tri lane particularly well. Uh, fortunately, Coffee did a great job mid. On the oh puck. yeah, your your puck absolutely dominated that uh that mid lane. Coffee, Coffee has a fantastic puck, and we know it, and other teams know it if they've looked at our games. So we try not to use the puck all the time. But we know we have it to fall back on, especially in a situation like this where we have the RP, we have um, the tether stun. Chaos Knight likes to get up close and beat on people, so we knew <laughs> that the puck was the right option, especially with the silence. The silence can do so, so much against those guys. That begs another question. I'm going to bring this right back to the gyro ban. Isn't gyro typically a hero that you want to fight as the IO Chaos Knight? I mean, if you if you think about it, Gyrocopter does really well. But if he gets singled out, which is something that the uh, um, IOCK can do very well, then it, it, he's not—he's really useless. What did you what did you feel about that? I think that as long as that gyro is getting levels and has some semblance of farm, as long as he can do right-click damage in some form, that flat cannon is going to absolutely tear you apart when you have the uh, the Riptide and the Dazzle Alt on you. There's just very little you can do when they have that much team fight control from the song, the boat, the torrent, the ice path, the wall, oh, yeah. the vacuum. And that leads to the next question. When they got that, I, I think it was in the bottom lane, if you remember, that one beautiful wombo combo on your team. Were you worried that you weren't going to be able to pull it through for that game? I mean, you were obviously at an ad advantage there, but their, their main skills were proving to be pretty uh, devastating to you guys. Um... I was a little concerned there. Uh, I felt like that was a fight we shouldn't have taken. Um, I don't know if I was unclear in that we should probably have backed off there. Uh, I think that might have been more on me than on anyone else. But um, I was still fairly confident. I knew that we were ahead. I knew that um, I didn't feel like Naga Siren was going to outcarry Chaos Knight in any way. She didn't have a whole lot. She had the Diffusal Blade, but um, I just don't think it was enough. Did you ever once during that game feel threatened? Like, especially at the beginning, did you think, Absolutely. oh shoot, this could be bad? At the start of every game, um, I, I always feel uh, just a little bit of nervousness going into anything like that. Where, but um, did you feel outdrafted at all? No, no, I never felt outdrafted. So despite having being against a total wombo combo, you felt your team fight was just enough there, and IOCK is one to really be able to avoid team fights really well. So you felt that that was just enough to put you over the edge, or were you did you feel like you had really outright won the draft? I, I definitely felt like I won the draft. Any any draft where I've gotten Wisp or Batrider, I feel very very confident about. Um, and I knew that they gave away the Wisp the first game, but like I said, our plan going into it was to push them really hard. And so we just gave it up. We let them think that we're not going to pick Wisp. They, we, we haven't practiced the Wisp. And uh, like we thought, they let it through the second game, and we picked it up and had two different strategies going into it. We weren't relying on one thing. 
All right, so any final thoughts that you have for my viewers here? I'm definitely going to make a video of this and post it up because a lot of people are requesting this kind of thing. But again, any final thoughts you got? Um, nothing I can think of. Just uh, uh, first of all, I want to say that my team did fantastic. I'm really happy with how they did. Um, Acer Veneer, thank you so much for standing in with us. He obviously did a great job. Uh, thanks for doing this interview, and thanks to Chib and everyone who contributes to the Reddit Dota 2 League, because I, I know it's not an easy task to organize this kind of thing, and all of the admins and Chib are doing a fantastic job. Well, likewise to everyone that you mentioned, and congratulations on your 2-0 win, and best of luck to you for the rest of the, uh, rest of the group stages. Thank you very much. You have a great night. Yep, you too.